Before we get to our presentations, it is my honor to introduce the president of Estonia, uh, Kersti Kailulait. Thank you very much for joining us, Madam President. Hello. Hi, Lauri. And I would also like to join um, uh, my voice in offering condolences to those who have lost loved ones in, uh, in this pandemic. And yet, we know that this pandemic indeed has changed uh, how the world thinks of uh, digital technologies. And by definition, this will have an effect also on how we should all think about cybersecurity. One of my, uh, I would say, even pet worries about uh, cybersecurity and the trust in, uh, in Estonian e-governance model globally, not here in Estonia, but globally, has been uh, the fact that um, each and everyone goes their own way of developing these services. And uh, they all are given the same name. For example, e-prescription in Estonia and e-prescription in, in US uh, both bear the name of e-prescription. But the Estonian model is based on safe, uh, secure digital identification and access to the system through our X-Road system. In US, it's an email. They're not comparable. But uh, the risk is that if people lose trust in one, they will automatically think that all e-prescriptions globally are as bad. So for us in Estonia here, what has changed is that uh, there are lot of, lots of um, rapidly uh, built and quickly, uh, quickly implemented e-services globally which are not totally safe because there has not been the time to make sure they are. And this, if we do not handle this carefully, means that there will be setbacks actually in developing public e-services, in developing people's thinking that uh, cybersecurity can make digital solutions safe to use. And that we actually, after this crisis, might revert to uh, the business as usual. This is the negative, but there is of course a lot of positive and I hope it will all turn out finally positive. Many people have learned that digital is safe, as safe as paper, doesn't spread viruses or bacteria, and have got this kind of, I've fallen off the cliff edge and survived feeling in the new digital world. And this for us, of course, means that um, our point has been proven. Governments can serve their citizens via new technology and digital means and therefore make the life of citizens more comfortable. Many have believed that uh, in Estonia it's possible, but now they've seen that elsewhere as well things might be possible. There are countries like Estonia, for example, where uh, also some services have been existing, but they have not been put to use. Now all these are in use. And there are countries where um, government has been developing uh, full-fledged e-governance models, but kept a person between people, a citizen and the system, for example, like Portugal. These countries find the transformation relatively easy. The others, I'm afraid, will have to learn to swim really quickly in really deep waters. And the Estonian experience of 20 years of e-governance says that it will all be an uphill struggle and, uh, and a huge challenge because, Lauri, if you and other Estonians really think back at the internet, which existed when we started our e-governance uh, model and building uh, X-Road, this was relatively safe internet. I mean, with relatively few users, there was a relatively small uh, element of darknet. The biggest danger was a virus, which you could easily fight back. Cybercrime was not really developed. Occasional letter, maybe phishing for some information was going around. And we've grown up with the internet, with all its risks, gradually building our firewalls against these risks, gradually building our cyber hygiene, our knowledge about the, all this risk. But now the other 
countries in other and other people they will have to jump in and swim in this wild internet which we know now what could be the best way to feel safe in this deep water well i would still say that it's uh, the good old digital identity unless unless you have a really good digital identity which is protected by the technology, but not only, also by the legal space. Only then can you create safe services online and in internet. So the big news in this sense is that nothing has changed. Nothing really has changed. Some points have been proven. Some risks, as always in the crisis, have been enhanced. And a lot of opportunities have been created. Estonia has always been very uh, open about its digital experience and ready to share with other governments. So we've created e-governance academy. We've leveraged its capacity with the cooperation project with United Nations Development Program. We even ran for the United Nations Security Council to make sure that uh, what we pro uh, promote as a solution can be also protected by uh, international law. We have fulfilled our campaign promise, by the way, right before the shutdown of the United Nations. Estonia, supported by US and UK in Security Council, took an issue with a cyber attack against Georgia and in the Security Council, first time forever, would you believe it, 2020 only, in March, early March, this attack was attributed to Russia. This starts to create case law on how to protect our digital sphere and our digital governance models and our sovereignty through it by international law in international organizations by accepting that the analog law applies also in internet. So many things indeed have changed. But as in every crisis, crisis only enhances trends. It doesn't really create new trends. Nobody has time for that in the crisis. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Madam President. Before you go, I have one more question for you. Um, um, the, the question would be uh, so that uh, um, what would you like to see change in the way that that states approach cybersecurity towards consumer citizens, you know, like how they protect their citizens online, not only looking at, uh, you know, the state sponsored activities, but also looking at the role of like public institutions of how we are protecting our citizens and our communities no, in Estonia and uh, in, in, in the world at large. It hasn't changed, but I hope it will change quite quickly now. Uh, is the understanding that, uh, first of all, in digital, there is no such thing like uh, separating uh, the internet into public and private domains. The e-services of public, public and private sector can only function properly and help everybody in the country if they are built on a single digital identity. It seem, seems so obvious. In analog world, we do expect our governments to provide us with, um, with an identity. We call it passport. In digital world, the governments don't. And then they blame the private sector that they do not uh, well guarantee that each and everybody who has an account, for example, in Facebook is what they claim to be. I don't mean that there shouldn't be anonymous internet. I just say that there should be a non-anonymous part of the internet which each and everybody can trust so that you really know with whom you act and interact online and this is the obligation of governments european governments by the way understood it before this pandemic i'm quite sure that during the estonian presidency of the eu council 2017 this understanding started to spread we've created aid us to make sure that our digital ids are, are mutually recognized and so on but now I think this will go global. Right. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, thank you for joining us today.